This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. If you like the book, you'll love the TV show. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. First, a quick update on our Oscar predictions. We picked a lot of the same nominees, and most of those did win. Mm-hmm. Marsha Ali for Supporting Actor, Zootopia for Animated Movie, City of Stars for Original Song, Damien Chazelle for Director, and we both picked Denzel Washington for Best Actor, yeah, but, but it went to Casey yeah, Affleck. Affleck. And we both picked La La Land for Best Picture, which almost won. <laughs> Eventually went to Moonlight. Uh, when we split, I did pick the right one. So the rules worked. Yeah. Viola Davis for Supporting Actress and Emma Stone for Actress. The final score, I got six and you got four. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. But on to our main topic. So I was really excited when Stars announced they were doing a series based on the American Gods novel. And I have been watching as it trickled out the news and it finally has a release date in April. Mm-hmm. I won't be watching it then because we don't have stars, but right. I will be watching it at some point. Right. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about TV shows based on books. Mm-hmm. Now you always hear about books that have been made into movies for as long as there have been movies. Well, I didn't know, but as long as there's been television, people have been basing TV shows on books, too. I I never really paid much attention to it. But in the last 10 years, there's probably been at least 100 television series based on books. Wow. And that doesn't even count things like um, Once Upon a Time, which are kind of based on a genre. genre. Right. Right. Based on more specific books. Yeah. So some of them that I've enjoyed recently are Sherlock and Elementary, which are both based on Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Um, Kitchen Confidential. That's an older series. Yeah, that was... Do you remember that? Yeah. It's based on um, Anthony Bourdain's first book. And that was a really good, short, 13-episode series. And that was an early uh, role for... Um, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that was very good. I highly recommend if you can get your hand on it. It's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, Sleepy Hollow. Right, which... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bones, which is based on um, books by Kathy Reichs. Right. You know? So those are just some of them that either are on now or have been on that we've really enjoyed. Um, if you look at those, though, a lot of those are sort of based on the book, but they don't follow the book's story necessarily. Right. And that's always a question as to how closely will you follow, and a lot of people say, well, if you follow it exactly, you know, the people who read the books are going to be like, well, I kind of wanted to see something and slightly, not only at least that, slightly different. But then you're limited by length, Yeah, which is, though, where you come in with a lot of the shows that are coming up um, now and some of those that are on now. Um, the 100 on CW right now is based on um, books, and actually the CW takes a lot of, YA books because mm-hmm. they're very angsty and makes them into yeah. shows. The sure. Vampire Diaries, sure. uh, Pretty sure. Little Liars, things like that. But then you talk about ones that really follow the books more, um, and examples of that are the ones you do see that are the shorter run series, mm-hmm. um, like Game of Thrones. And the thing with Game of Thrones now is they've they've ba- caught up. They've caught up. Yeah. <laughs> and George R. R. Martin has said, I'm in no hurry to do the rest of them. Yeah. So they're on their own now to so, continue the storyline. Right. So up until this time, that's followed the books pretty closely. Yeah. Um, Outlander on Stars is also following the books fairly closely, mm-hmm. although I, I guess they're leaving a lot of stuff out. Um, the Shannara Chronicles on MTV and The Leftovers on HBO. The first season, again, followed the book pretty closely. Mm-hmm. But then as you get a second season, you've run out of book material. Right. But what I'm really excited about is some of the shows that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So um, Netflix is going to do a lot. And again, it's because of those limited series. They can really do a book justice. So one of them is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. And that's, again, a young adult book. It's about a girl who commits suicide and leaves clues behind as to why and how it affects it. It's really an anti-bullying book. Hmm. So... Um, The Handmaid's Tale uh, by Margaret Atwood is out on Hulu now. It's a dystopian women's fiction. Um, It looks pretty good. I don't know. Have you seen any of the trailers for that? I have not. So you're you're not at all Hmm? interested in that Oh, I actually kind of am. That's one of those things I'm like, oh, I should probably get to that at some point. (laughs) Okay. Then, um, just came out in January, and it's been really well received as a series of unfortunate events by Lenny Snicket on Netflix. 
This is as opposed to the movie they did. Yeah. Um, so they did a movie that wasn't very good, and I think that was a lot because Jim Carrey was in it. Well, and I also think it's much harder, as you said. It's much it's much easier to do a TV show where it's an ongoing thing that you can you can give time to tell your story, as opposed to I got two two and a half hours to jam this all in. Well, and a series of unfortunate events is a series of thirteen books. Yeah, and I think for the movie they took like the first three books and mm -hmm. put them in one movie. But in this way, I think, I'm not sure, but they did one episode for each book, which is, you know, great. Mm -hmm. You can actually expand it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, another one of my favorites, Anne of Green Gables, is coming out on Netflix. Um, we had a Disney series about that a while back. Right. There have been a number of different versions of Anne of Green Gables. PBS did a series at one point, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So... This is yet another remake of the L.M. Montgomery book, and I am going to watch that. A lot of these things, when they put them out on Netflix, sometimes it's hard to think about when you're going to watch it because you're just going to sit there and watch 12 hours of television. And it's also, there's no hurry to get to it because Netflix, is if it's stuff that they've produced... It's not going anywhere. It's not going to cycle it's, off. It's, it's going to be there for a very long time. And in a way, that almost... I think almost hurts the show because you are like, ah, get to it, I'll get to it. Eventually. There's a lot of Netflix stuff I'll get to eventually. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but at the same time, as you said, it's a commitment. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, American Gods, based on the Neil Gaiman book, is coming out. Um, it's going to be on Stars in the U.S., but it's going to be on Amazon Prime everywhere else. Because Stars is a U.S. network. So, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's happening a lot because of rights issues. They get the international rights to somebody else, and then the U.S. rights go here. And now this one then won't be all out at once. You know, it'll come out, you know, as a weekly series on stars. And then, of course, there's people like me who are going to wait until it's completely out, and it will show up on Amazon Prime, you know, maybe next year for those of us who don't have stars. And, and with Amazon Prime... It's not as worldwide a system as, say, a Netflix is. Mm -hmm. So lots of areas in the world won't see it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also on right now, it just started as Big Little Lies. It's based on a book by Leanne Moriarty. It's on HBO. And this is like a women's fiction. Not really a chick lit, although almost. And they got some big names for that one. Shailene Woodley, Nicole Kidman, and Reese Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing you see when you get these um, books that people who like the book then want to be in the movie. And if it can go on HBO or something, they can spread it out longer. And at the same time, it's a set commitment mm -hmm. as opposed to I'm going to go on a TV show that may go on for years. Yeah, don't I don't want to do that, but I'm more than willing to say, oh, I'll go do this thing for a few months and be done. So then the question arises, though, is it then a... TV series or is it a mini series? Well, that's always been a question, especially when it comes to awards time, is what's a mini series and what's not. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty much what the producers decide it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, one that I'm not at all excited about, but I know a lot of people who are, is Mine Hunter Inside FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit by John Douglas. That's going to be on Netflix. And it's. Um, Basically a true version of something like Criminal Minds or something. Okay. You know? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, J.K. Rowling is going to have her first TV series, Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, which is her pen name for this detective series. It's going to be on BBC and then on HBO in okay. the U.S. Um, this is, I think, isn't there some sort of partnership between BBC and HBO? That, that happens quite a bit. Yeah. And, and BBC then tends to end up partnering with somebody else on yes. a lot of this stuff. If it's going to be on in the U.S., it's either BBC America or right. PBS. Or, right. And, you know, HBO will bring in more money. So. Yeah. Um, Charlene Harris of True Blood Authorship is getting another series called Midnight Crossroad. It's getting a pilot on NBC, and somehow I don't know if that one will actually come to fruition, just because her True Blood series was on HBO, mm -hmm. and so there was a lot more graphic stuff in oh, it. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure she can tone it down for NBC. Yeah. Um, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn 
it is technically called a miniseries on HBO, mm, so that's well, interesting. Well, there you go. Maybe so they're not fun. planning on making any more. She's the author of Gone Girl, and perhaps there's just no way they can see making a second season of this mm. in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, the Terror by Dan Simmons on AMC seems to be AMC is sticking with some of this horror stuff, like The Walking mm -hmm. Dead, which I didn't even mention comics at all in here, right, because right. Th that's not Books. what I'm talking about. Right. But um, they, they tend to like that horror kind of thing, and this is what will fall in with that. And uh, the last one that I'm going to mention today is Emerald City on NBC, which did not get rave reviews. It's, of course, based on the series of books uh, from The Wizard of Oz onward. And that's a show that's been pushed back, was pushed back like twice. It was like made like three years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, okay, maybe second half is it. Nope, nope, next season. Nope, next season. But it does show... <laughs> that the way these TV series on books work, you can push them back because right. they can be a contained unit. Yeah. You know, if you just do 13 episodes that tells the book's story, you can put it on whenever you want. Sure, sure, so absolutely. I think we may be seeing more of that in the future, and especially with this model of the 13-episode series. Right, it really lends itself to that. It does. Yeah. So if you're not watching television, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife Treat Comics on iTunes, or on our website, snpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>